Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you once again, this time around for pointer session number 35. Oh, that's number 37. Okay. Anyway, before we get to start, I'd like to appeal to all of you to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NPLEX application and review to 100 nurses. We've done this in the past two consecutive years. Of course, we won't be able to do this without your support. So please help us achieve this. Just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Don't skip. And a good news to our dear nurses from the Visayas and Mindanao, part of the Philippines, we'll also be giving out scholarships pretty soon. Okay, so stay around and keep track of the developments. Okay, so let's move on without further ado to our session for today. This time around, set number 37. Okay, so as I always say, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is, if you are preparing for your exam, what do we ask ourselves? Well, what do we need to study? First and foremost, you have to get an expert opinion. So my first pick for this session would be hypokalemia. Now remember, hypokalemia may not necessarily be asked as a separate concept in the test. It could be asked in relation to the administration of diuretics. Know for a fact that your hypokalemia could result from too much urine output because potassium is primarily excreted either through the bladder or through the bowel. So usage of diuretics and laxatives could increase the risk of the patient to develop hypokalemia. So when we say hypokalemia, low potassium levels. So the normal is 3.5 to 5.3, but the test will not actually ask you about these normal values. It will be provided. So what are the things then that you have to remember? You have to be able to interconnect the information that are provided in the test. Like for example, if the patient has diabetes insipidus, if the patient has diabetes mellitus, definitely the patient will have hypokalemia. So when you see a low potassium level, you may want to ask the patient if they are suffering from any of these conditions, meaning diabetes mellitus or diabetes insipidus. Or you can ask them if they are having diarrhea or vomiting. Vomiting associated with bulimia. Now, hypokalemia could also result from alcoholism and chronic kidney disease. Okay, now, if your patient has hypokalemia, always remember the functional concept that muscle weakness occurs in both hypokalemia and hyperkalemia. So if a patient comes in with muscle weakness, it's not going to give you a categorical um, answer as to whether the hypokalemia, uh, the muscle weakness is associated with the hypokalemia or the hyperkalemia. So what are the four things that you have to see so that you can safely say that the patient is indeed having hypokalemia. Remember the code CAMP. Look for constipation, abdominal cramps, muscle weakness, and polyuria, palpitation, and polydipsia. If these four sets of symptoms are presented in a case, think about hypokalemia. So what ECG wave will you see in a patient with hypokalemia, exaggerated U-wave. But don't get me wrong, U-wave is considered as part of the normal ECG wave. So when you have exaggerated U-wave, then that's associated with hypokalemia. So when a patient is having hypokalemia, the priority is to provide oral replacement of potassium, monitor the client's ECG tracing, and the most important thing is serial monitoring of the client's potassium level. So before we proceed any further, let me first congratulate one of our passers who took and passed the test last January 20, 2024. We have Joyce Bautista from the University of Pangasinan. My fellow Pangasinense, congratulations for a job well done. And 
let's listen to her success recipe. Firstly, I would like to thank God dahil kung hindi niya pinahintulutan ang pagkakataong ito, hindi ito mangyayari. Honestly speaking, hindi ito ang first choice ko, not the American dream. May goal na ako noon pa, 2018, at disidido ako na ipursue yun, pero tila bakit hindi ko makamit, kaya nagpahinga muna ako until 2022. So she's practically saying that it wasn't really for her to aspire to be in America. So she shifted her goal to first and foremost taking a rest. Okay? So I came across a certain post on Instagram and a very good friend of mine encouraged me to try other tasks which I did. Okay? I listened to her this time. Nakinig ako sa kanya. Will talaga ata ni Lord itong daan na ito at sa RAGRS din ako napunta. So she was saying, maybe it's God's will for me that I was directed to go to the Ray A. Gapas Review System. It was a long process, so many sleepless nights. I work in the afternoon till night, tapos I need to attend the class at 4 a.m. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, kailangan ko itong gawin kung gusto kong pumasa. Very good attitude. She told herself she needs to do this for her to be able to pass. Pero may mga pagkakataon na napapagod ako. Nawawala ako, nawawala ako ng drive para ipagpatuloy. Pero there's this side of me na laging nagpapaalala na I need to do this. So there were times that she feels tired and she may want to give up but There's always a voice inside her that reminds her to keep pushing. Tapos naalala ko, I sent a message to Dr. Ray kasi I felt lost. So she sent a message to me because she felt lost. Hindi ko alam kung paano ko maaalala lahat ng concepts at pakiramdam ko, hindi ko nakakayanin na wag na lang. Tapos sabi niya, oh, she remembered what I told her. Give it time. Kaya yun, nagpalipas muna ako ng ilang araw sa pag-aaral tapos nang bumalik ako, nagtsaga ako at sinig pa kung huwag makatulog. Sobrang helpful ng functional concepts kasi parang yun ang naging foundation ko. Pero nakatulong ng malaki yung three books as well as yung core shell. Twice kong binasa yung NCLEX 311 at yung nursing reminder sheets. Tapos twice din ako nagsagot sa core shell. In between patients, pinapanood ko yung gapos pointer sa YouTube para kahit paano may natututunan pa rin. So she utilized all the learning tools that we gave her from the books to the course shell to the YouTube videos. I am very thankful na sa bumubuo ng Ray Gapos Review System, mentors, IT staff, student coordinators, at sa mga taong hindi nakikita at naririnig pero part ng system. Thank you. Tama si Dr. Ray at si Ma'am Joanne. Kapag binigyan mo ng time, magiging worth it. So that's what she wanted to share. If you give it time, eventually, it will be all worth it. Akala ko hindi ko ito masasabi, pero ito na yun. I'm a proud product of the Ray A. Gapos Review System and now a USRM. Believe, never doubt, you are next. Thank you very much, Joyce Bautista, for the trust in our system. Now, on to our next concept. This time around, it's about glaucoma. Now, glaucoma is a group of Um, diseases that could lead to increased intraocular pressure. So primarily, the common symptom would be blurring of vision. Um, if this acute, it comes with eye pain, and then eventually tunnel vision develops. So it's as if you're looking through a tunnel, all the peripheral areas are dark, and the central area is the one that you are able to uh, visualize okay? We, from, from within a tunnel-like structure. Okay? So when you try to look at the lights, there would usually be rainbow halos around the lights. And these common manifestations would help you identify that indeed the patient's condition is glaucoma. Now it has a genetic basis, so it's not a surprise if one of the parents had glaucoma and then eventually when, one, uh, when the children grow old, potentially they could also develop it. So... Um, Glaucoma is not curable, but there are treatments available to delay the damage into the eyes created by the increase in the ocular pressure. Example of the treatment would be administration of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like acetazolamide. Okay, so a client with chronic glaucoma um, is considered stable, so you can delegate 
the client. Okay. Next, I'd like to congratulate all our pastors who are increasing in number every day. So thank you for the trust. And of course, last but not the least for this specific set of concepts would be delusions. Now, when you say delusions, it's, it's a false belief that's not expected of a person's level of education. So this false belief is usually fixed. And this is related to um, the most severe form of psychosis, that's schizophrenia. It's also related to mood disorders. And you might be surprised, some clients with Parkinson's disease would usually have it. Now, your delusion is primarily treated with antipsychotics and antidepressants. However, pay particular attention to the fact that if your patient is not receiving an antipsychotic, we don't give them levodopa. Levodopa is an anti-Parkinsonian that is given in order to prevent pseudo-Parkinsonism, which can result if the patient's taking antipsychotics. But if a patient with schizophrenia is not taking antipsychotics, there is a chance that if they are given levodopa, levodopa may worsen delusions and hallucinations. Now, another type of therapy that could be implemented to a delusional patient could be cognitive behavioral therapy, in which the aim is primarily to change the patient's thought process. And since delusions could result from schizophrenia and the schizophrenic client is a symptom bearer of a sick family. So family therapy is also indicated for delusional patients. Okay. Now, another advice I'd like to share with everyone who are subscribing to this channel would be the use of technology. It's very important that you have to learn how to navigate technology if you want to pass NGM. And with the Regapo system, we're so proud that our technology and tools are published worldwide. And here's one of those satisfied clients who passed the test. Which book helped you the most? And then this is what she says, NCLEX 311 and the comprehensive review. That's what she's saying. And I said, great. Did our quick fix help you? And then she says, yes, sir. So for her, it's NCLEX 311 and the comprehensive review. Remember, at the Regapo system, there are no extra and hidden fees. Just have to come and pay one time and you can avail of all these review classes and learning tools as frequent as you would want. Okay, so we also have our own app and QBank. We call it the Regapos Quick Fix for Shells. And of course, the most important requirement to pass NGN is that your learning environment should be conducive. So at the Regapo system, there's no congestion of students and we're the only one with our own NGN simulation room, okay, which you can use for free. So I'd like to invite you if you may want to avail of our program, the quick fix that we conduct every month, the fee starts at 3,499. It includes your right, NCLEX 311. Okay, your NCLEX are in quick fix in pharmacology and your nursing reminder sheets. So included in the package should be your choice of live face-to-face -face class or live virtual class on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, the QBank, the strategies, and of course, my personal mentoring. I'd like to see you in my next class. So this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapu saying thank you, and I'd like to see you soon. Be the next NCLEX RM Passer.